Wendy. I'm an occupational therapist. Um, currently, I work at the Children's Neurocentre, um, but prior to that, I did four years working with um, driving assessments at a driving centre. James, I'm a driving assessor at Heart Ability, um, assessing fitness to drive and helping people stay independent. Um, I suppose really there's a variety of reasons. Some some people book because they have a diagnosis, they just want to make sure that they are safe to drive. A lot of it is the confidence that, you know, actually, am I still safe to drive? Should I be driving? And just want that reassurance that actually, yes, it's okay to carry on driving. It's okay. Um, there's a lot of people who their family members are questioning whether or not they should be driving. Um, and so going for a driving assessment just gives them them and their family that reassurance that yes actually this is okay um you know yes just because you've got fatigue just because you've got some you know foot drop using adaptations or just changing driving style you are still safe and you've officially been assessed as safe whereas it's not just a, a family member going oh you're a bit fast around that roundabout you know so actually it can give you reassurance and the family reassurance that actually it is okay to carry on driving um sometimes the dvla will refer people in and I think James can probably explain that a little bit better than I can. Um, but sometimes the DVLA will request a driving assessment just to make sure that the person is remain safe. So through the medical um, system. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of the time also people will start thinking, well, I can't drive with my feet. So what do I, what's the next option? They might go for motability and motability will then do a referral to for a driving assessment to get that advice about what adaptations would be best for that person. Um, so anybody who has is on the motability scheme, they would should get an assessment really to work out what best adaptation is going to fit that person. Um, because it's always advisable to practice using that bit of equipment before you get it fitted to your car because if it doesn't work you've spent money or the motability will say oh no this is it for the next three years so it can be quite you know quite important to make sure it works for you and doesn't cause any other issues and other you know pain in a, another area or something so um so yeah i mean i think it is just reassurance confidence and you know assessment to make sure that what they're using is is the right piece of kit really to keep keep yourself safe and keep yourself driving. Initially for a driving assessment, um, you'd be introduced obviously to the people who are going to be to going out for a drive with you. Um, and just find out a little bit about you as a person and what you need to drive for what you're using a car for, and find out a bit about some of the issues you may or may not be having with driving whether it be physical or cognitive um, and then you would be chatting to the i suppose a lot of it is you know just finding out a little bit about driving we'd find out a little bit about whether you were having difficulties physically with using a vehicle whether it's the pedals steering using the handbrake so just find out a lot more about the drive itself um, all, all within an office, so it would be an informal but formal chat. Um, and there may be that you know, a few um, tests would be done just to see how your thought processes were going at the time. Nothing particularly to be concerned about, however, because that's more just to find out how it, you best learn um, in a situation. So if, for example, you are going to change your driving um, style because you're having to have adaptations put into the car it might give the ot and the driving instructor and driving assessor a bit more information on how best to teach you in the future um, so a lot of people with ms it's initially it's the loss of sensation in their feet there is a lot of fear that um, because they've lost sensation or some strength in their feet, they haven't got the ability to use the brake or the accelerator. So they just worry that their foot's going to slip off or they misplace where their foot is going, especially in a manual car. So a lot of people do struggle with that and start worrying that they're not going to be able to do an emergency stop quick enough. Um, so that's, I think, one of the biggest ones. Fatigue is another one. Um, so just getting so tired when driving. So a lot of advice would be just, you know, pace yourself don't don't feel that a long journey has to be done all in one 
give yourself a little break here and there. Um, toileting, going to the loo, obviously urgency is a huge one for a lot of people with MS. Um, and a lot of that, again, it would the advice would be just, just look at the journey, see where the toilets are, just check where you can go and make regular stops so that you can, because, you're, you're, you know, I think if you have got urgency, it can distract you from the drive itself. And that's where you, an accident is more likely to happen. Um, and, you know, these type of things are the type of advice that we'd be able to get um, given when you're out in your driving assessment. Um, it doesn't mean you have to stop driving. It's just, you know, strategies that you can use to make it so that you remain safe. Um, sometimes if the upper body strength is getting weaker, shoulder strength, there's things that can be adapted in the way of, you know, for steering. So I think everything and anything that you might be experiencing physically can um, be altered. Um, and, you know, even some of the cognitive changes. So even if you have got brain fog and some memory issues, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stop driving. It just means that you might have to start using a sat nav more often or have other strategies put into place so that you, you know, remain safe. The most important thing is that, you know, with the people we want, you know, OTs, driving instructors, driving assessment, it's all about maintaining people's independence for as long as possible and keep them behind the wheel for as long as possible. It's not about going for an assessment so we can, you know, rip that license off you. It's all about how can people keep their license for as long as possible and remain safe. And um, because obviously safety has to come first, but actually there's so many ways to change how you drive to keep you safe. It isn't just about take you know stopping driving there are i mean to start off with pedal wise simply going from a, a, a manual car to an automatic car might be all that somebody needs to consider um because then obviously you're taking one foot out so if your left foot is the one that's you know losing sensation or you're struggling with you don't have to use your left foot with an automatic car but with a standard manual you do um, there are ways of adapting the pedals to make them slightly larger. Um, you might find that you would want to use one foot on the accelerator, one foot on the brake, so you could change just how you drive a standard automatic car. Um, so that, you know, or you could take your feet out completely and start driving just using your hands and there are um, a push-pull, there's an over-ring, there's lots of different adaptations you can do to, for accelerating and braking with your arms and your hands instead of your feet um, and they're, they're just you know the few most the simpler alterations there are a lot more more complex ones as well but um, I would say they are probably the most common that we would be looking at. really totally agree with what Wendy says it is all about um, keeping people independent uh, for as long as possible um, from, from my side of things we, we always start with nothing we, we consider that most people that come to see us are experienced drivers. Uh, so the first thing I, I would look at is, can we just adapt the driving style to, to match the change in that medical condition? Um, if the driving style can change a little bit, as Wendy says, moving from uh, manual to automatic, um, or just changing the way you go about dealing with junctions and roundabouts, um, that, that's our job. If we can help change the driving style, in that case, we won't need any physical adaptations to be fitted. But if the physical symptoms are beyond that, then yeah, we, we can look at modifying the car to, to suit the individual's needs now and trying to future-proof them a little bit as well. It depends on whereabouts in the country you are because I think all driving assessment centres um, are either, some of them are through the NHS, some of them are volu uh, like voluntary sector. Um, so it depends on whereabouts in the country are to the actual cost. Sometimes there's a cost, sometimes there isn't. If you're referred through the DVLA or through Motability, quite often there is no cost. But if you're self-referring there, sometimes it is a small cost. I think the biggest worry, worry is losing their license. Yeah. I think that's the, you know, there's a huge anxiety that, you know, this is my independence. I can't, my mobility has reduced. So actually I rely on my car to access the community, to go to all the different activities that I enjoy. 
And if I go for an assessment, they're going to take my license off me. And I think that's the biggest fear that everybody has. Um, that you know that it's not understood how important driving is to them, but reassured that actually the the people in that assessment room know exactly how important driving is to you, um, and you know will do their utmost to to give you the opportunity to stay driving. Like I said earlier, we we always start with with nothing um, fitted to a car. Um, we'll always have a, a clinician sat in the back. Uh, so as good as we are as the driving assessors, it's good to have another view, and especially a view from the back seat that that looks at what's going on physically with the driver. So if I start bolting a thing onto the car, and and the clinician sat in the back thinks no, that that's not working, that's putting a a muscle group under strain that shouldn't be um, that that's a real benefit or bonus of having two of us in the car looking at it from different angles um, but primarily we we start with nothing if, if possible if there's still some uh, some ability we'll ask the client to drive as they have been driving for the last however many years so as we can see firsthand what difficulties they're having if they're having no difficulties, then it's just some reassurance. Uh, Wendy mentioned earlier family members. Um, quite often family members might panic. They think, you know, MS is gonna stop everyone from driving, so you should stop driving. Um, so they might just want a confidence boost so they can go back to the family and, and say that I've had a, an assessment, I'm safe, and they're gonna keep an eye on me for the, for the next few years as well. Um, if what we see uh, causes too many problems and safety starts to become affected, that's when we can start thinking about adding extra bits onto the car. Uh, if it is the, the legs, the lower limbs that are causing problems, we can utilize the upper limbs. If the upper limbs are, are not quite strong enough, there's several different things that we can do to the car to, to make the steering much, much lighter. To, um, you know, even just looking at uh, different makes and models of cars with different shaped steering wheels to hold on to. Once we find uh, the right method of control and the right way of driving, uh, Wendy mentioned earlier, we, we quite often send people away to get some tuition. Um, they've been driving with their feet for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, to change their, their method of control is a big thing. Uh, so we send them away for some tuition. Normally that's only a maximum of 10 or 15 hours of tuition. Um, and then we'll have a, a check-in with them after they've had those lessons and make sure that they're now safe, they're comfortable, they're pain-free, um, and they're managing their symptoms when they're driving. Typically with MS as well, we, we do like to keep a, a check-in on people quite often. If, uh, if someone changes their method of control, for example, moving to hand controls, and then they start experiencing problems, they'll then hang the keys up and say, well, I've given it a good go. Um, I've tried hand controls for a couple of years. That's now not working. I'll give up. But we like to have a check-in just to say there are other systems that we can use. Um, typically, most people with MS uh, will be on a, a medical driving license, a three-year license. Uh, and I would always advise someone to come back and see us at least every three years, have a review of your driving, and then you can send that report to the DVLA with your reapplication. Uh, and all going well, the DVLA will just file that and, uh, and be grateful. Um, if the person has referred themselves, uh, or if they've come in through motability, um, we can pass it on to DVLA, but ultimately it's the person's responsibility. Um, if we're concerned about safety or concerned that the person's going to ignore our recommendations, and that would be unsafe, then we, we can pass on to DVLA, but that happens very, very rarely. Um, if the DVLA have asked somebody to come in, which is, is possible, uh, then of course the, the report will go directly to the DVLA.
Well, first of all, once you're diagnosed with, with MS, um, it is a responsibility of the driver to inform DVLA of that diagnosis. Um, quite often, as long as there's no concerns, the DVLA will just log that information. So they may contact the person's uh, consultant or even GP for their advice. And as long as that information comes back to the EVLA that there's no concerns, MS is not affecting them in a way that could impact driving, the DVLA will just probably put them on a three-year driving license for a regular review. Um, if, they've, uh, if they've had to come in for a driving assessment, either refer themselves or DVLA's asked for it, the DVLA has their own medical team uh, with doctors and nurses. Um, they'll review what we've done on assessment and, and they'll make the final decisions uh, based on the information that we've given them and the information they've received from doctors. Yeah, like I said earlier, it, you, it is a legal obligation to inform DVLA of a, a diagnosis of MS, uh, along with uh, many other medical conditions. Um, for the most part, as long as there is no concern, DVLA will do nothing with that information. Um, and especially if you've taken responsibility and you've, you've had a driving assessment, the DVLA will be quite confident normally that that you are managing everything yourself and should there be a change you'll notify them. Um, at the end of that three year period or about six months before the DVLA will simply write to you and say your license needs to be renewed. Um, there'll be a questionnaire on there about your medical condition and any potential changes that you've been through um, and they may ask or may inform you that they need to uh, contact your doctor or consultant. Uh, as long as everything is in place and they've got no concerns, they'll simply reissue that driving license. If there are some concerns, um, and even if there's some concerns following a driving assessment, it's possible that the DVLA will reduce that to a, a one-year license. So they'll say, we can see that your medical condition has changed we're now going to review you annually rather than every three years just to make sure that everything is still safe and above board. Um, so as scared as uh, most people are of the DVLA, they have got their own strategies, if you like, for managing people's medical conditions. Um, unfortunately, their, their letter writing is not the best and it's quite, quite abrupt and quite threatening at times. Um, but, you know, they, they just want to get straight to the point. Um, you need to do this, this and this uh, and do it quickly um, is generally how their letters are, are written. Um, but if you've got the backing of um, someone like Wendy, an OT or a clinician, if you've got the backing of a driving mobility centre and if you've got the backing of your, your own medical team, your doctors and consultants, uh, then DVLA would probably leave you alone. Absolutely, always inform the insurance company. Um, again, you can use our report to send it to the insurance company. Um, that's saying I've taken responsibility for, for things myself. I've been assessed, I'm safe. Um, but any change in your medical condition or any alterations you make to your car, uh, the insurance company must be informed. Um, based on that, uh, some people are a little bit cautious or worried that the insurance company is going to absolutely crucify them with, with charging more money. Um, they're not allowed to do that. So just because you have a medical condition, the insurance company cannot charge you more money. Um, if you've got some very expensive adaptations fitted to your car, your the cost of your or the, the value of your car has increased, so they may charge you more in that case but they can't charge you more simply because you've got a, a medical condition. Uh, that's not allowed, that's discrimination.